candidate interviews continue this morning. And today we are talking with Yakima City Council District 5 candidate, Miss Liz Halleck. Good morning, Liz. Thanks for coming in this morning. Good morning. Yeah. Yeah, thank, thank you for having me. Thanks for coming in. District 5 candidate, you are uh, running for the seat held by Kathy Coffey, who decided to not run for re-election. And so to start us off, Liz, who is Liz Halleck? Tell us a little bit about yourself. And take your time. We've got, we've got lots of time. We'll, we're here till 8 o'clock for you. So, so uh, uh, tell us who, who is Liz and where are you from, all that good stuff. Well, first of all, where's Dave? Yeah, exactly. Is Dave, he in the Bahamas? D- D- Dave, uh, no, I th- probably not. I think he's. I think he's maybe going on, uh, maybe to to Vegas or something like that. So, uh. Yeah, you know, <laughs> I, I would I would lay money. That's where he's going to be. But um, but um. Anyway. Um. Okay. So, um, Dave, uh, is I'm I'm one of uh, who is Liz Halleck? I'm one of uh, Dave's number one fans. First of all, first and foremost, I'm ah. sad he's not here tonight. So okay. or here today. So you know, but that gives us a lot of t- time to. For all of us to talk, right? Um, And uh, I am an attorney. I am um, a person who's got lots of babies, including businesses and children and uh, um, lots of irons in the fire. And um, one of my uh, biggest practices or my areas of litigation has always been open government. And that is uh, what inspired me to run for the legislature and now has inspired me to run for Yakima City Council. So thank you. And yeah, thank you for having me. You got it. You got it. How, how would you describe yourself politically this morning? Um, hey, that's, that's a great question. And that's something I wanted to talk about. Um, so um, I've been, been endorsed by the Washington State Progressive Voters Guide. Um, and I read an, a little op-ed, a letter to the editor in the Yakima Herald about, you know, um, some of these detention centers look better than downtown cities and so on and so forth. So I'm like, have you been to some of the downtown big cities? Because the economy is hopping, right? Um, so I kind of want to move away from this kind of negative. Um, well, I embrace it. I embrace the libtard. I'm like, I'm a libtard. I'm a snowflake libtard. I just embrace it, right? I want to move away from that. And this, how about I post some on Twitter? Like, how about instead of liberals, let's call us employers? You know, because I think that there's so much division in this country and in, in Yakima too. Um, I think that we really need to look at people's backgrounds and what they do and what they bring to um, our economy and our society here in Yakima. Well, what do you bring to the economy here in Yakima? Sure. So um, I have 13 employees um, spread over a couple businesses. Um, I have my own solo independent law practice. Um, and I help, you know, people that are going through landlord tenant was always my big thing. I do in Yakima, I do a lot of, um, people trying to get their firearms rights restored, people trying to get their uh, records vacated so they can get a house, they can get a job. Um, you know, I do, I'll, I've been doing for 10 years, you know, a lot of pro bono work and I also do litigation. Like I said, I do a lot of open government litigation, um, and, of, as as Dave knows, and always gives me a hard time about, you know, I am in the pioneering marijuana industry. Um, so I own a couple businesses and ancillary businesses related to that. And I do um, a lot of risk management consult- consulting because uh, I what I have found is that I'm actually... Um, I have learned quite a bit about risk management. And that includes, you know, uh, risk management really is making sure you get your employees and taxes taken care of right first and foremost you know and following the law and the law is very complicated I never thought I was going to be a business person like I you know I had that opportunity to work on Wall Street and I chose to go to law school and I had a professor he actually was from Vegas he was the chairman of the gaming commission and said you go to law school you're going to understand business right and so he ended up being like the CEO of Hilton Hotels and chairman of the gaming commission he would take students to like the UFC fights and stuff like that because when you know the law, you understand yeah, yeah. everything that's going on. You know, I, go ahead. Go ahead, Richard. Yeah, uh, that, that brings up a question, uh, it, just in general, not so much about Yakima, but just managing government yeah. in general. Uh, 41% of Congress are attorneys. Okay, and and I would say that's part of our problem. Attorneys argue for a living. That's what they do, <laughs> and and yeah. and and we see a lot of arguing on the national level. Dysfunction. Why does being an attorney qualify you or anybody else more than someone? 
someone else that you're running against. Sure. I'm, you know, even if you're the, I am kind of on the libertarian side of things, but even if you are, there's still going to be regulations. I mean, that's the nature of society. So you have to understand how um, administrative law applies to people's lives. It's always going to be there. There's always going to be these, I mean, death and taxes, right? All that stuff's going to be there and how they spend those taxes. Now, why is it 41% of Congress's attorneys? Well, I think actually, you know, back in the day before we had these really expensive MBAs, people were going to law school. Um, and when you're writing laws, you should know a little bit about statutory construction and what the law is going to mean for people. Um, but, you know, I encourage everybody to run. But my my not I don't think just being an attorney make, would make you a great representative of the people. Not it's not just being an attorney. Right. Because, you know, there's a lot of bad attorneys out there, just like any profession. What I do specifically is very helpful because I did open government law. I did land use and municipal law. So I know that stuff. And one of my biggest gripes the past couple of years has been city staff and a lack of explaining what the Open Public Meetings Act mm -hmm. means to those counselors. So I'm going to be on that council, and I don't know, you know what's going to happen with a city manager and a, and a potential new city attorney, but I am, I, so as a risk management person, I am a lot of times the, no, we can't do that person. And that can be helpful. To, to, uh, a, a, a short question and a longer one, uh, a, a follow-up to what you just said. Do you, th do, do you, what's your opinion of people that seem to make a living out of suing government over open government violations these days, number one. Mm -hmm. And number two, since you own a recreational marijuana business, how do you feel about the government being involved in that and how it's worked out, the way that we tax mm. our retail marijuana operations? Do you think that that's fair? Would be better if oh. the government weren't in so involved in it? Okay, so number one, people that make a living off the open government stuff, well, that's not me, but I do know some, at least one or two people. But I, when I, you talk to them, they really do it to promote the process because it's not a lot of money. The city councilors that get fined, they get fined $100 mm -hmm. for a knowing, it has to be a knowing and intentional violation. So they're doing it um, for the process. But I've always said that this is very unfortunate. Every time... I mean, last Tuesday's special meeting at the city council where they didn't really say with particularity that they were going to be appointing an interim city manager. And they started talking about the strong mayor, which was not on the agenda. Every time that happens, and it's happened before, right? They just, it was in the paper last week, they got dinged for a lawsuit, $13,000. You and I pay for that, right? Yes. We pay for that. This is why I don't appreciate people suing. <laughs> I get the Open Meetings Act, but I would say, for instance, if I could use the Chamber of Commerce uh, dust up here a few months back as an example, I believe that was would be filed under the category of honest mistake, yet the taxpayers got beat over the head for that. Mm. Why can't we just sue and mm. say, don't do that again, instead of having, having to pay someone sure. because they pointed it out? Well, so... Of course, somebody in government is going to say, oops, it was an honest mistake, right? It was an honest mistake. The Open Public Meetings Act is a very simple act. Do it in public. Everybody's invited. And that's, to me, I'm like, why is that so hard? Why is it that we only let our friends be part of the decision-making process when we're in government? That's not supposed to, That's not how it's supposed to work. We don't see as the people are, you know, governing authority to these people just because we elected them. We all get to be part of that process. And as a city councilor, that's what I want to do. Transparency, office hours, more public hearings. I don't know if you noticed this about the council. They always have these, uh, <clears throat> they put things in the agenda, kind of last minute sometimes, and then people want to speak. For example, there was a, there, tonight is affordable housing. There was a special meeting on it. Landlord said, hey, we would like to talk about housing. And the city was like, nah. We don't really want to hear your comments. I mean, the people that know about housing, right? And so it's a huge problem. And I, as a land use attorney, I've been through so many city council and county commissioner meetings throughout this state, right? And um, Yakima has a problem. And it, I want to be a part of that solution. Okay. And do you want, if you, real quickly, because you said short, long, and I'll do it long, short, okay. um, on the marijuana issue. So mm -hmm. if you've been reading the paper, and I've always said this to the commissioners of Yakima County, marijuana is a very tough industry. 
Okay, it is a slog. And for the producer side, when they ban those producers, what I said is just let them go out of business on their own because that's what we're seeing right now. The tax rate is way too high. These mom and pop operations are all going out of business. And that would have happened to a lot of people in Yakima County without the commissioner stepping in. So what happened is a lot of the big guys, the well-funded guys came in and they this last spring brought up a lot of the product because they saw people going out of business and so now we have a supply issue we also have a traceability issue that's been in the paper mm -hmm. it's a very difficult business but i will say this you know it is an in-state business no tariffs required it's something that we should be um, we should be supporting local mom and pop marijuana businesses and that's what i do in my situation of course yes the taxes are way too high KIT News Time is 7.29. We are talking with uh, District 5 candidate Liz Halleck, and we will continue with our conversation right after the bottom of the hour news. Some of the things that we'll be talking about with her, homelessness, those ice flights, any pet projects. Does she support the strong mayor? Some of the things that we'll be talking to her about in the rest of our 7 o'clock hour as we continue our candidate interviews right here on KIT. We're talking with District 5 candidate Liz Halleck. And thanks for coming in this morning, Liz. Appreciate it. Thank you. I appreciate you. Yeah. Hey, uh, we've got a, you know, we, we've got a lot of questions here, but every once in a while we get a question from one of our one of our listeners. And and uh, <clears throat> and and Roger asked this question to you, Liz. Everyone talks about fixing the roads. She says she wants to put in or redo roads that'll be more pedestrian and bike friendly. Fixing the roads for pedestrians is good, but where's the money coming from? We can barely fix potholes and spray for weeds. Like to know where she's getting the funding. Great, and that is a great question. Well, we we do have um, a mandate in with the city to the city has a mandate to um, redo a lot of roads right now, and they actually complain about that in their CAFR, the money that they have to spend on on streets. What I've seen a lot is the same streets being done again and again, and I don't remember if you, I don't know if you remember um, how one of the uh, people in the building department dropped. A federal grant, like a six hundred thousand dollar grant, dropped dropped it because he didn't get the the permits in in time. Um, so you know, there's money out there. You might be one of those people that kind of uh, doesn't like government and all that, but it's there. So why aren't we finding new sources of revenue and having someone apply for these grants? So our planning department does not have a grant writer. A lot of people don't know that. That's why this is such a great question. My campaign has really been focused about quality of life and bringing a better quality of life to attract businesses here. Because when businesses scout out, like when Trader Joe's is scouting out where they're going to put their next location, they're looking at these quality of life scores. And a lot of cities, you know, the economy has boomed and Yakima hasn't taking advantage of a lot of the things that and amenities other cities have like bike lanes i mean it's it's not that hard to ask for curb cuts in the sidewalk so for when disabled people are walking the street or me as a mom with my stroller i can get down the street so families can get down the street so <clears throat> there's money out there the problem that we have is we've spent seventy five thousand dollars on a master bike plan well hello we don't even have a master pedestrian plan okay if you want to get the grants for the the cycling lanes and the pedestrian improvements, you got to have both, okay? And so sometimes we just do things without really thinking it through. Um, we spend a lot of money on studies without a commitment. And I want to cut back on doing studies unless we're really committed. You know, the million dollars that was spent on you know, drawings for the plaza and stuff. We got to be committed as a council to follow through on these projects before we start spending money because that's where a lot of money gets wasted, right? So I think that organically, if we do invest, I think that's a, uh, in these structural improvements and that's a role that government can fill, right? That you and I can't fill, right? If we invest in some of these improvements, it's going to bring business. Because as a business owner, I want to be on the best street, right? Because where people are going to come in and spike friendly. It's great for the environment. We're too car-centered here in Yakima. Oh, it's an old zoning code. So basically, what your, your answer would be, you're going to bring in a grant writer. Mm. And... 
there's something that needs to be discussed. And I think this needs to be a public hearing so that we can hear from developers and the public. We need to talk about impact fees because most cities in Washington have impact fees. Now, impact fees for can be for a, a number of different categories. But what it is, is you're a developer and you're bringing traffic to a specific area. Okay. You would be charged to pay for the problems of traffic you bring so street lights the sidewalks okay right now we're asking developers to put so much money into wastewater fees that they're paying more for sewage than for the quality of the street that gets people into the businesses and you know there can be different ways to structure it latecomer fees that sort of thing it needs to be a discussion that has to happen because we want to grow and when I, I can't turn left to get into the business, sometimes I'm like, I'm just going to go home. Uh, Liz, I ask you a number of questions here. And, and with it's a KIT News time is 749, just with about 10 minutes left. Let's just get through some of these. Uh, first of all, ice flights. How do you feel about the ice flights? Well, I don't think it's so much a feeling as a matter of law. Do you, yeah. Um, do what you support I, the ice flights? No, I don't support the ice flights. I think it's terrible optics. I was at a business meeting and someone's like, oh, Yakima, you're the folks that have the ice flights. This issue of immigration was meant to divide us. So let's pretend it's not immigration for a second. Let's say it's nuclear waste. The federal government wants to bring nuclear waste to our airport. We have a Fifth and Tenth Amendment right, first and foremost, as a local jurisdiction to say no. It's not the other way around that that when there's no positive mandate here that we must do this, and even if there were, we don't have to. It's, it's the founding fathers were very afraid of an encroaching federal government. I am not a huge fan of the federal government. And it is amazing to me that folks that don't like the government in their lives are okay with this. Now, <clears throat> on the issue of... I mean, are you, I guess, you, are you willing to lose a lot of federal dollars, like the manager of the Yakima ah, Airport says? Did you we, hear we could? Well, <laughs> did you hear my comments about the case law? This was not fleshed out very well at all by our legal team because King County came to an opposite conclu conclusion. So the leading case on this, I had said in the comments, is a case about... Uh, uh, everybody has to raise the age of uh, drinking to 21 if you want those highway safety dollars, okay? That's because highway safety dollars are directly connected to uh, ending drinking and driving, right? And without a... The, the Yakima Airport is not there solely, you know, for immigration and, and ice flights and that sort of thing. They're, they cannot take away safety funding for something that's so ancillary now <clears throat> so there's so many layers this is a really complicated question but what i didn't see was a legal review i went there i talked to the clerk she went back to cliff i think what happened is this okay i think mr moore made a decision as he is apt to do such as you know hiring our firing our police chief without going to the council and at the end of the day he needed to justify his decision without giving the council all the legal options on the table. I do not believe. And when it, in, in the meeting minutes, it says they talked to King County, right? And they said they are not afraid of having to pay back. I mean, that is just a fear tactic that Mr. Moore put in them because he made a mistake. He did not follow these rules of open government. He did not go to his bosses first. Okay, this should have been a conversation the community and that council had a long time ago. They were not given all the legal options. And I'm sorry if I didn't, I, we're pressed for time, so I don't have time to really dig into that legal issue. No, that's, that's but, fine. The well, bottom, but the bottom line is my opponent has said the same talking points that Cliff Moore said that, you know, this is a non-city issue. It is a city issue. We get money from that. You know, we can't uh, interfere with we're going to have we're going to lose money if we do this. We can't interfere with the federal government and interfere with um, uh, the fixed base operators plans to work with this. Pri if he's a private individual. He's working with feds. OK, so she does not. She supports the ice flights, but she also says she wants a sanctuary city. OK, that is inconsistent. Okay, at least I'm being consistent. I do not believe that as a locality, we need to facilitate a broken immigration system. 
Others may disagree, but at least I'm consistent on that point. Well, I, I would agree with you on that. At least you are consistent, although my, my quick count of uh, the interviews in the, in the local paper this morning says that if we took a vote amongst the candidates about continuing the ice flights, you'd be on the wrong end of that. You're in the minority. And oh, wait, this, wait, wait. Can, can we run it through, though? Because if, if it were a new council, it would be K-Funk, no ice flights. Jason White, yes, ice flights. Bernice Pons, no ice flights. Um, the, the District bigger 1, issue, no ice flights. Me, no ice flights. It would be 4 to 3. The bigger right? issue... The bigger issue here is how you feel about our immigration system. You've made that clear. People who think that the immigration system is broken and mean-spirited mm -hmm. tend to be against the ice flights. You are consistent mm -hmm. in that that uh, you think we should be more inclusive. You've said that in interviews, more inclusive. I'm assuming you mean, among other things, to people who aren't here lawfully. Okay, so and that's what I would say. Is so, why, so you're putting words in my mouth, though, for, honey. Why would you be for, why would you be for people being present here unlawfully. Okay, so you're putting words in my mouth, and I started this conversation by saying, let's take the immigration issue out of it first and say it's nuclear waste. Because the immigration is a very complex is issue. Now, am I for people being here unlawfully? No, I'm not here for people being here unlawfully. And it's very frustrating when certain people, the conservative side, puts ascribes to me beliefs that I don't hold, and I really do not appreciate that, okay? What I am disgusted about is a local government being commandeered and our arms being twisted and a city attorney who is not advising his clients properly, which is happening again and again. As far as immigration goes and the immigration system goes, my problem with this administration is they have vastly expanded the priorities for immigration to include people who have been here for 30 years who are contributing to our society, expedited asylum with no judge now. That is a violation of due process. America is about due process I don't care where you're a citizen. When you're on our soil, you get due process. And that's what makes America great. That's what makes us the best country in the world. And when you start targeting brown people and Central Americans in stated policy versus all the white undocumented here, that's an, a violation of equal protection. Okay? So it's not that I'm like, hey, open borders. But no, that's not it at all. Let's not help and facilitate a broken immigration system, especially when you heard the fixed base operator himself say he relies on undocumented immigrants for his cherry orchard. Let's have a real conversation about immigration, what our role as a locality versus the federal government is, and then there's a third thing that we need to talk about in this community. There's so much subtext, uh, subtext and we need to get it out there. We need to talk about race in this community. We need to have a conversation about race mm. in this community. Okay, well, news time seven fifty six. Uh, you you mentioned in your in your interview with the Herald when you were asked what your your top priorities were. You mentioned inclusiveness. So what do you mean by inclusiveness? Who are we not including? So inclusiveness. Hey, that was really interesting too. And she she um, the reporter put in there that I wanted to keep undocumented immigrants safe, which is really great actually let's keep everybody in our community safe but what i was trying to say is that statistically when undocumented immigrants feel like they're a part of the community it's good policing and we've had you know police chiefs from from cities all over america say this is good police work we want people not to be afraid to tell us who's doing bad things in our community and that's my biggest concern okay Liz, I want to ask you just before we got about a minute. We got about two minutes left. You got a minute to answer. Do, do you? Uh, it's probably not long enough, and I apologize. Do you support the strong mayor? Only if there's a strong council. Right now, there's a movement to put weak city councilors in there who aren't going to stand up for the for for their districts. Right? I want to represent the whole city, but at the end of the day, we just had this ACLU lawsuit. A strong mayor is going to be elected by the majority of voters. Right? which is districts five, six, and seven, okay? Those are not Latino districts. Are the interests of the poor communities gonna be represented? Where, where I am really strong is that I have street cred with those communities. And I also have cred, 
credibility with the business community. We need Yakima to work together as a community. And a strong mayor, you know, I'm not sure that is right until we see what a strong city council can do. Excellent. Uh, you've got uh, you got about two minutes, Liz. Uh, we're all crammed in the elevator in Yakima, a whole bunch of us. Tell us, uh, here's your chance, your elevator speech. Tell us why we should be voting for you. Yakima is a great place to live, but let's make it a great place to do business. We need to be welcoming of new ideas and new people that come here. Our biggest export should not be our kids. We have a brain drain in Yakima. We want those kids to stay. We want better quality of life. And... We need somebody who's going to look after the budget that really knows big business, really knows the economy, and that's me more than any other candidate. We can't just spend, spend, spend. We need to fix our reserves because the economy is not going to be what it is forever, and we need to take care of all the people here in Yakima. Thank you. Liz Halleck, District 5, we wish you all the luck. If you make it through, we'd love to have you again. And, of course, if you make it on the council, we'd love to have you as a regular, regular speaker right here on KIT to tell everyone what's going on. Thanks for your time this morning. Thank you. I appreciate you having me. You got it.